All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine in Pipeline or CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the future by Mags Bell, who is in the Gold Coast in Australia. How you doing, Mags? I'm very good, John, and thank you very much for inviting me on. Yeah, I'm not going to do the stupid joke that I used to do with everybody from Australia, and that is like, give me the lotto numbers for tomorrow because it's, it's, a, bit old. it's a bit old now. But, <laughs> um, but, uh, but Mag, so is an elite executive master coach, 20 years experience in parting leadership expertise, and uh, also as the director of your own speaking and coaching practice. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is you have this CPR formula that you that you have obviously formulated and called cut polish and reset your own inner diamond keeping you transparent and clear on your goals and, and values so just talk to me about why did you feel the need to come up with that in the first place and then we can talk about it I, I think the the diamond analogy for me fitted so well through my career and then following so many other careers that uh, diamonds are made under pressure. Yeah, they're in the earth, they're, the pressure build, they're carbon, just the same as you and I are carbon. Um, so we're made of the same material, but at the same time, pressure is actually what creates the diamond and makes it valuable. So when you look at what we do for a living, uh, we run businesses and we you know, even if you know you're on the sales side of things and you're a salesperson, right up to the head of the company, we not just are put under pressure, we put ourselves under pressure. And pressure can go one way or the other. It can actually you know, make an amazing diamond or it can actually split everything up and ruin it. So it's the balance of getting the diamond out that I was really interested in the fact that I myself had burst my diamond for a while into splinters and then brought it back together again. And I realized it was the pressure, not that anyone else was putting under, it was me. It was the pressure I put under myself under. So for me, the diamond analogy was just spot on for leadership because we, we tend to do things under pressure, but more so the pressure we put ourselves under and we can make ourselves ill by putting ourselves under too much, too much of a time. So that's yeah. what it no, I, no, I, I love that because I, I agree with you, I think. Uh, and I think we sometimes we get addicted to pressure or we feel like if there's not a ton of pressure on us, then are we slacking? Are we not doing enough? Is there not you know, or are we not reaching our potential? So, yeah, I, I think we put an enormous amount of, of pressure on ourselves and we're not good at separating good pressure from bad pressure. Uh, absolutely. And I think I remember for years, John, for years, I used to say, oh, I work so much better under pressure. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, the right pressure to do. <laughs> However, sometimes, as you say, we get addicted to it and we think that's how it should be. And we don't then allow. So the, the thing about putting pressure on is we can cause stress and the stress can then really, it, we live a life under stress and we don't even know what it's like to relax. We think we're relaxing, but we actually don't know what it's like anymore. So it's being able to get the, everything that I talk about is really about balance. So it's balancing yourself enough that that diamond, that diamond just shines and, you know, you, you lead the way because the diamond is so sparkling that it's like people cannot help but being pulled towards it, but also they're, they're following the direction, they're following the vision that you're putting out because you're, you're just, the, your brilliance is shining through. And that's really what it's all about for me, you know, helping people yeah, get and, that. And, and I think it's, it's very timely because uh, I, I, th I, I always think that nowadays that, you know, people are so overwhelmed. They've got so many distractions. There's so many things invading their heads at all times. This is what I always say when people say like, oh, I'm busier than ever. I always say, no, you're more distracted than ever. Be honest. Yeah. We all yeah. are. And, and it takes some discipline to start separating out and creating the space where you can have the good pressure, but also where you can remove. Because a lot of the stress is self-inflicted by our behaviors. Uh, it, it's all self-inflicted by our behaviors. And the thing is, we, we don't really want to look at it and we don't really, we get, 
it, it's habitual. So when it becomes habitual, it becomes comfortable. But that doesn't mean to say it's good for us. <laughs> so it's actually finding what is really good for me that it, it's, it's not so much the comfort zone of that stress and pressure I'm putting myself under, but actually what am I getting out of this? And is the work I'm doing actually really effective? Because a lot of the time, as you say, we wear this busy badge. So, you know, how are you? Oh, I'm really busy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely busy. Oh, how busy have you been? Oh, I've been busy for quite a while now. You're, and is this busy, you know, as if this is really great. And, you know, I got it. If, whenever I'm talking to people, you know, I, I'll try and stay away from the word because if I'm busy, it doesn't mean to say I'm accomplishing. <laughs> it just means I'm adding hours, you know, I'm filling things up in my hours of the day. It doesn't mean to say I'm effective. So um, I stay clear and I also sometimes say to people, oh, that's not such a good thing that you're busy. And they, they sort of go, what? Well, well, well no, because it is. And it's like, no, no, if, if you're working and you're really enjoying it and it's really smart work, then yeah, that's great. But if it's just busy, you could be getting anything out of it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a funny, it's a it's a funny observation though, if you think about it. I mean, nobody ever says, if you say how are you, nobody ever says, Yes, I'm I'm extremely productive at the moment. I have every, everything is working extremely well and I have everything organized and I have enough space to do the other things that I want to do. I, I've never heard anybody ever say that. Yeah. Very very rarely will anybody even think about it, let alone say it. <laughs> yeah. So so I think it's it's so I think the work you're doing is really important because I do think that people or people measure things in the wrong way, right? And one of the things as we said is like, oh, busy, 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 working, you know, constantly, constantly thinking about things and or constantly being involved or answering things immediately and jumping from here to there. And what we've gotten away from is taking a step back for a moment and number one, examining, am I doing the right things? And, and I think even more fundamental, why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, yeah. It's it's the one thing I think that when I'm working with people or when um, when I'm on stage and talking about this, I I love it when people get the real aha moment and they think actually I don't really know. And one of the things when when I do leading me a new paradigm in leadership, when I stand there and I say to people, "What are your values?" And most people think they sort of know their values, especially when you're the leader of a company and, you know, you've got all these values on a wall. You, you think that's it. But even, and I, I mean, I work with CEOs. I, I work with people who run their own businesses. You say to them, what's your values? Even if they're on the wall. And the first thing they do is go, uh, and I go too long. If you've got to go uh, in the middle of it, that means you don't know them well enough. And if you don't know them well enough, you don't know you. If you don't know you, who's leading you? And then what are you allowing people? Because in leadership, I, I, I used to say that, you know, I helped people become good leaders, which is really bollocks because none of us can actually become good leaders until we lead ourselves. So leading me was sprouted from that and understanding that people follow. So we might say one thing to someone, but in actual fact, what happens is they do something else. And we get really annoyed that they're doing something else, but we are actually doing that thing they're doing. And it's the, I don't want to look at me, but I'll blame everybody else. And I think that's the issue that we have. We have to really look inside ourselves. So when I ask that question, most time people are not very clear on what are my values. Yeah, you know, I'll sometimes, I'll rhyme up what's on the wall. I'll definitely rhyme it if I can see it, and then I'll I'll see it. But they are so core to our being, and and I talk about it values. We have three brain. Literally, we have three brains in our body. So the first, you know, set of foundations we have is our values. And when we go against them, we know about it because this gut brain really makes us feel it. And then we've got our why. Our you know, our, our purpose, and then we've got our vision. But we don't tend to view our life like that because most of us haven't a clue really what our core values are. We've maybe got an idea of what our purpose, but most people go, oh, I actually don't know that. And the third thing is, what's your, your own personal 10-year vision? Oh, I haven't done it out that far. 
And it's like, well, mm, you know, if you're not going that far, you're not allowing your imagination to take you to where you really want to be. So, uh, yeah, it, I, I, I spend my time with people going aha to the fact they don't know themselves. So if you don't know me, then you really you can't help yourself and you will just keep saying yes to things and doing things and 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 high, highly achieving. I mean, you, you can be a very high achiever. I Hey, hand up. I was a very high achiever at the top of my game, but I actually gave myself depression at the same time. I yeah, don't really yeah. see that as a win, right? So <laughs> <laughs> it was a win in the long run because I got, I really don't want to be back there again. But, you know, it, it's to what degree are you going to give up the me, you know, just to have achievement? I still highly achieve, but I don't make myself ill anymore, which is a far mm. better, and may I say, the, the diamond shines brighter in that way. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But it is it is a fascinating thing, though, that uh, we don't spend enough, I, I mean, self-awareness for me is a huge thing. We don't spend enough time figuring ourselves out, and you're correct. I mean, most people, if you put them in a in a leadership position or even in a manager position or a supervisor position, the first thing they think about is, oh, great, I get to lead or manage other people. But reality, the as you say, the first thing is if you don't know how to lead and manage yourself, well, then you can't lead and manage other people or or it's going to end up uh, it's going to end up in a bit of a mess. But but you have to take that time out first to your point is to figure out who you are, what your values are. What does leading mean to you? Where do you want to go? All of these questions, if people ask themselves those in advance of, of taking on leadership positions, uh, I think we'd be in a far better place. I, I, I think you're absolutely spot on, John. And I think if, if people were succession planning others into those roles in that way, it would be such a better world for everyone to be in. Because when we come to leading me, we stop blaming everybody else. Right. We actually start looking at, whoa, yep. wait a minute, what do I need to do to change this situation rather than you need to change? <laughs> so uh, when, when we get that, it, it makes a massive difference, not just in your own life, but in the people around you. So this shining the light stuff, and, and, and I don't mean this to just be a sort of flipping you shine brightly. It is so like mega that when you're shining that torch for others, and that's coming out of you and you're helping growth and development. Because really, when we get into leadership positions, and my, I, I, my hand's up, my first leadership position was another badge. You know, it was like, I'm a manager now, so you'll do what I tell you. <laughs> Not realizing there was nothing like that. So if I had been helped to understand me more before that happened, and my and, and to be honest, understanding me is totally about awareness. She said exactly the word. Uh, I help people become more aware of self, which allows them to become more aware of others around them. So it, it's so important that if I had that before coming in, I wouldn't have actually been a shite manager for other people, right? And, and I've got no doubt I was, because I was a certain style, and if you weren't that style or close to that style, you would have had a really difficult time. I've never gone back and checked, but knowing what I know now, I've got no doubt I ruined some people's days and they had a really shy time. Uh, <laughs> but that's because I can look at that shadow side of me. As Carol, I say Carol the wrong way because I'm Scottish, right? Mm -hmm. I may live in Australia, but I have a Scottish accent, you might have noticed. Um, so Carl, or Carl, <laughs> whatever way <laughs> you, you understand it, but Carl Jung, the great psychologist, psychiatrist, you know, he talked about the shadow side. And when we embrace the shadow side, because it's light and dark, guys, we're in balance. When we won't look here at that shadow, I don't want to look at that, we'll see it in other people and we'll blame them. And we won't take responsibility for why someone has come into my life to show me my shadow and I'm refusing to go there and look there. If, if I'd been taught all of that before I'd started, people would have had a much easier, better more fabulous time in my teams 
than eventually mm. later when I got to that point where I could build an interdependent team rather than a whole load of individuals or dependable on me because I it had to be about me because my ego, like everybody else's, is out of balance. And when you get to that balance of ego, which is what I teach, is it's a beautiful place to understand your job is really to develop them, to grow them so that they produce what's right for your clients and your people. And they get so much out of it that they want to develop into the next and so on. And it's so great. And everybody's got a say and understanding. That is bliss. That is bliss for a, a company and a team. But without that, knowing me, so leading me is so important. And leading yeah, and, me is and, one word, one word, not two words. Leading me, the big ego, it's yeah. leading me. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I I, I agree, and I I think uh, everybody should read a little bit of Carl Jung. To be honest, I mean, it's very yeah. accessible stuff. It sounds like it's not, but it really is. Yeah. Um, and and the other thing is, you 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 mentioned earlier. I just had to write it down because it always cracks me up. The accountability thing is, if you ask people, is accountability? You know, take a random group of people and say, is accountability important? Everybody would go, oh yes, it's very yeah. important. Uh, but what they actually mean is holding other people accountable, not holding mm -hmm. themselves. And I think that's to your point is that's the starting point is holding yourself accountable and recognizing the ego. I mean, we all have it and we all act out on our ego at times, but it's good if you can recognize where it's coming from and you can you know, stop yourself or even take a step back and go, OK, is this really something I should be getting exercised about or is this just my ego speaking to me right now? And I think what's really, it worries me when I hear things like leave the ego at the door, drop the ego, you don't need it, you know, we don't want ego here. No, you do. Ego is a good thing, right? It's, it's here, it's here to protect us, it's here to look after ourselves and everyone else, it's here to allow us to step into that limelight and, and lead. So it's not that ego isn't important and needs to be there and I think this is where we've had this mix up where people think we need to drop it and it's like no 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 what we need is to balance it so again it's back to balance if we balance our ego we don't go up into super ego right now it's not that we don't we will but it's how quickly we can bring it back so super ego is about these are the rules regulations you can't do anything different to that I'm right, you're wrong, this is how it needs to be. So that's super ego. And we often jump, especially as a control freak, you can jump up into that. But the problem with jumping into that is the other part of the balance is that we need to then be down here in what that Freud called it the super ego and id. So the id is poor me, everyone else is to blame, I'm the victim. You won't believe what they've done to me, but you don't understand because. And the thing is, if we're there, we at some point have to be there, whether it's our inner critic stuff. But this is the balance that we play with. If we can get that here and we we stop ourselves from really doing that. And this is what mental health is really about. Right. When our egos are way out of balance. So I, when I'm teaching, I talk about. We need to learn to master ego, not let ego master us. And too many of us are, and, and you see the polarity at the moment, because the polarity, because we are in a universe that is built on polarity, but the more we can make that an equilibrium, yeah, the, the easier our lives become. And the more we can yeah. teach that to others, the easier life becomes. Yeah, no, I think I think balance is such an important important message, as you said, especially today. But and and even leaving aside the stuff outside, even in companies, I mean, you see these pendulums they swing so far to one side and then so far to the other side, and it's like we've lost perspective on saying, you know, yes, it's like you know throwing the baby out with the bathwater, isn't it? It's like oh, everything that you used to do that's rubbish. Don't do that anymore. We need to do all these new things instead of going. Here are some things that continue to be true and enduring here are things that maybe are anachronistic right now here are some new things that we could but bring it all together but this but we do live in a world of where it's the shiny new toys or it's the one extreme to the other it's and we've lost the sense of balance like balance has become almost like oh well that's 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 too mediocre 
right? Rather than the that's where the power is. I think I, 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 my belief is that it was bastardized many years ago when we started talking about work-life balance. And work-life balance sounds like it should be, you do, well, back to the nine to five job and then you relax, right? And it's like, that's not how balance, that, when I do balance, I don't do that. You'll notice that I'm always talking about that because balance is sometimes I work a wee bit more than I need to. Other times I play more, right? It's to do with the balance that I need as an individual. And we're all individual. And if we get to know me, if I'm leading me, I understand what I need and where it's that the pressure then starts to actually get too much that I need to bring it back. But when we're just running, and we just keep going, you know, and, and the adrenaline's running and the, you know, the cortisone, which causes even more. All those chemicals are actually going to peripheries. They were meant for fight or flight, run from the, the, the tiger, <clears throat> excuse me, the tiger that's coming for me, I need to run or I'm going to fight because hopefully that's done her. Right. That was what the fight or flight stress hormones were supposed to be about. However, we keep them there. So and when we keep them there, it's because we don't know ourselves enough to know when to stop and balance that. The more introspection we can do on that, the easier our lives become. And the other thing is, you know, you talked about how in, in companies we do this. A lot of the time we're so busy reacting. Right, and I talk about being in the movie. So, you know, when you're in a movie theater and the, the screen's so wide, you're in it. You can't really see anything around it. And you're in the movie and, you know, you, you're, you're in the whole thing, watching the whole thing, reacting like, oh, wow, that really, oh, oh my God, I can't believe that. Oh, that is so funny. So you're constantly really reacting with the actors in the movie as if you're in there. And then you hear something beside you and all of a sudden without moving, you see that someone's walked in and they're eating popcorn. There's another two people have arrived. My partner Paul's sitting at the side of me sleeping. So obviously he's really enjoying the movie. And I'm out here watching the movie while observing everything else. So I'm now in observation mode rather than reaction mode. We spend our lives at the moment in reaction, which causes all of our hormones. So we are out of balance. So that's all people do. Someone says something, I'm going to react to that. I'm in it. I'm in the movie. I'm reacting to you. Whereas when we come out and then we start asking questions around that in a balanced way because our emotions are balanced, life becomes so much easier. So yeah, we, yeah. we need to learn to balance more. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I think it's fantastic points. And you're you're so correct. I think we live in a very, very reactive world today where people feel like they, they almost feel like if they don't react immediately, like if they come back a little bit later or something that somehow they've lost, you know, it's moved on. And sometimes, to be honest, we'd be a lot better if a lot more things just were left to move on. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, so, uh, and often, John, mm -hmm. you'll find that even when we accidentally leave it, it gets better anyway, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It, it really does, and we discover that maybe things aren't as important as we thought yeah. they were. Um, listen, this has been fantastic. Um, you, um, you mentioned speaking. I presume uh, you you speak globally. I mean, will you be coming here to the US anytime soon? Yeah, I'm hoping that next year. But you know, if if things go really good uh, the way they're going at the moment, and we get heard and people get to fly to and fro without too many obstacles. I reckon round about next year, around about the fall next year, uh, I will try and head back uh, because I've really missed uh, being across in the US where we've had many a great time and I've got some really great friends over there. So I'm hoping that if we can get a few gigs set up and I do a bit of speaking over there, I do some virtual speaking as it is because the world mm -hmm. became more virtual. I'm glad I went Two years before COVID hit, I went virtual anyway. So I've been speaking virtually for quite a while and it, it, I like to make that interactive for people. But at the same time, you know, I love being in front of live audiences because I really feed off of that and they feed off of it too. So yeah, let, let's hope, fingers crossed, we'll get over there uh, back, in, well, back end of next year, uh, 2020. Yeah. 
they, if, well, if I, 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 come up before, who knows? Yeah, well, I think your message of balance is one that is very relevant and needs to uh, needs to get out there. Uh, all of Mags' information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Mags, just uh, a, a last few words about what you do. I, I think probably the easiest way to talk about it is, yes, I do cut, polish and reset the inner diamonds that we have within uh, our body as well as our minds. And... I, I, I help people flick, flick frustration, overcome overwhelm, and really allow that diamond to shine as bright as possible for themselves first um, by leading me. That, that's, that's what I do. And transformation is really what people get. Knowing me makes life so much easier. And that transformation also helps transform the environment they're in and the people around them. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Mags. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening. And we will see you again for another interview very soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Stay true, stay you, mate. Keep bringing out your brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you.